Can you believe that this Switch is five years old? It has been a good half decade, but it's 2022 now, so is the Switch still worth getting? Absolutely it is. Look, there's no denying that Nintendo's current console is a little bit underpowered, especially when you compare it to the PS5 and Xbox Series X. But there are still so many reasons why it's worth picking up, and we've got five of them to share with you today. So prepare to get your wallets out if you don't already have a Switch, and while you're at it, prepare to hit those like and subscribe buttons too. Here are five reasons to own a Switch in 2022. Let's start with the most obvious, shall we? You can play the Switch while you're on the toilet. Done. That's it. That's all five reasons. That's the whole video. What more do you need to know? Perfection while you're pooping. Okay, okay. All right. There's definitely more to say. Turns out the most obvious reason is actually that the Switch is portable. Good luck bringing the PS5 on your weekend retreat, or even moving it from its position under your TV cabinet. Consoles have become absolute monsters. The Switch, on the other hand, is perfect. You could juggle with these things if you could actually juggle. What the hell are you doing? Just taking the juggling clip. No. And no, it's not just convenient for when you need to go to the toilet, despite what Tom would have you believe. Whether you catch the train to work in the morning or have five minutes to spare before your friends arrive in the park, the Switch is the perfect companion. Now, we don't necessarily think that your basketball team is going to want to play basketball on this thing after training, like Nintendo would have you believe, but a bit of Mario Kart in the back of your mum's car on the way home? Now, that sounds a little bit more likely. Has your mum ever said to you, stop playing that stupid game box and go outside and get some sunshine? Well, mum, pequino les dos. Pequino les dos. My mum literally said this to me last week. I'm 26. I don't even live at home anymore. Give me a break, mum. Speaking of parents, the Switch is the perfect console if you've got multiple young ones in your life. I fought like cat and dog with my brother about whose turn it was to use the TV and the PlayStation. Not only is the Switch considerably cheaper than Sony and Microsoft consoles, but you don't even need a TV. When my parents divorced, they bought a second PS2 so there'd be one at each of their houses. But my brother and I just used to cart them back and forth because we both wanted to play one at the same time. And as a result, neither of my parents could use any of the TVs in their house. So there you go. If you ever want to watch the news again, you're way better off getting multiple Switches for your kids than any other console. Originally, the life cycle on the Switch was a little subpar, but now, thanks to a few revisions, you're looking at between 4.5 and 9 hours of battery life compared to like 3 when it was first released. Now obviously there's a big difference between 4.5 and 9 hours. This gap is just there to accommodate for different power consumptions. If you're playing a graphically demanding title like Breath of the Wilds, you're looking at the lower end of the battery life spectrum, but if all you're doing is scrolling through the news section and playing Cat Tales, you should get closer to the full 9 hours. Handheld gaming really has come so far. The Game Boys and the DS's were amazing, but the Switch is just on a whole new level. Now we know that there are more powerful portable machines on the market, like the Steam Deck, but they are largely inaccessible or just ridiculously expensive. We'll likely be waiting years before we get our hands on a Steam Deck down here in Australia, if it ever even happens at all. We're literally taking our switches into town with us on the weekend. What else do you expect us to do in our shitty hotel room? Watch free to wear TV? No thanks. <laughs> it's a no brainer. Phone, wallet, keys, and switch. I'm heading out and all I'm taking with me is my phone, wallet, keys, and switch. Yeah, phone, wallet, keys, and switch. Just One of the most exciting prospects about buying your first switch in 2022 there's actually new hardware out for this bad boy. That's the OLED model that was released in late 2021. This is 100% the best Switch to buy currently, especially if you want to play in handheld or tabletop mode. Unfortunately, there's no real advantage to this one if you exclusively play docked on your TV, but even on the slightest, most teeny tiny chance that you don't want to play on your TV, you're way better off getting the OLED. We guarantee you're going to want to play in handheld at least once. The most glaringly obvious difference between the OLED and the original Switch model is, of course, its namesake, the OLED screen. 
Not only does this organic light emitting diode display make everything look so crystal clear compared to the old LCD model, but it's also bigger, coming in at 7 inches rather than 6.2. Unfortunately, the comparisons here just don't do the screen justice. You'll never be able to catch something as well through a camera as you can with your own eyes. So you'll just have to take our word for it when we say that the difference is ridiculous. It displays blacker blacks and brighter hues of every colour, giving the best of games a literal new coat of paint. But it's not all about looks. The OLED also comes equipped with better speakers. This is an underrated addition to the latest Switch model. The sound is so much better. You have deeper bass, crisper mids, and all round better sound quality is available now. Take a listen to this. Doesn't the old one just sound muddy? There are also a few other quality of life improvements, like an actual functional kickstand and a LAN port on the dock, but these aren't as important as the audio-visual upgrades. Laura is the primary caregiver of our OLED model, and to be honest, I'm pretty jealous. I kind of want one. If you are buying your first Switch in 2022, then joke's on us, really. You won't end up like me with two versions of the same console, you'll just have the best one right at the start. As we mentioned earlier, it's no secret that the Switch isn't the most powerful console of all time, but there are still some beautiful titles that it's able to support. Games like The Witcher 3 are absolutely huge, and while you do have a couple of sacrifices, such as the graphics and lower frame rates compared to the PlayStation or the PC, the game still runs surprisingly well on the system and is definitely worth playing here. The sacrifice of super high graphical fidelity in order to squeeze games like this onto a portable console seems more than fair to be able to play The Witcher on a plane, or your lunch break at work, or as Tom suggested while pooping. And for a lot of people, this freedom is more than enough reason to buy games like this on the Switch rather than other consoles. So the Switch is entirely capable of shrinking down massive games that you can find on other high-powered consoles and adding them to its already extensive library. But some of the stars of this library are Nintendo's own AAA titles that have been specifically crafted to run on the system. If Breath of the Wild wasn't reason enough to own a Switch already, it was for me. There are countless other exclusive Nintendo titles that you can only play on here, such as Mario Odyssey, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain, Splatoon, the list honestly goes on and on, and each and every one of these games is another reason to own a Switch. Unfortunately, there's not time enough here to dive into all of the amazing exclusive titles the Switch has to offer. But thankfully, we did that last week in our video, 10 Best Exclusive Games on the Switch. So go check that one out if you'd like to know more about them, and hopefully we can convince one of you to pick one of them up, or to buy a Switch in the first place. I feel like we say this in almost every video, but one of the Switch's superpowers is its huge emphasis on indie games. Other big consoles like PlayStation and Xbox feature so many AAA titles that independent titles are often overlooked. Nintendo, on the other hand, directs so much attention towards these games that they've affectionately nicknamed them Nindies. Nindies mean a lot to Nintendo, so much so that they even give them their own spotlight away from the big budget titles allowing them to really shine in the form of the Nintendo Indie World Showcases. These are whole presentations like Directs, but are solely focused on the new and oftentimes quirky indie titles that are making their way over to the ever-expanding eShop. Nintendo's loyalty to indies have allowed so many interesting titles to truly make their mark in the world of gaming such as Hollow Knight and even Stardew Valley. Of course, not all of these games' success can be attributed to the Switch. They're both incredible games and they would have found success on their own, but Nintendo's constant support and dedication to pushing indie games definitely would have helped. Nindies are some of my favorite games of all time. Big development companies know what sells, so I feel like we're a little oversaturated when it comes to shooters or zombie games, which are great, don't get me wrong, but I just love how different and creative indie games can be. They can be so experimental in their concepts and art styles, 
allowing your library of games to be so vibrant and variable that you can never get bored. Whether it's taking a short hike up a mountain to call your mum, or balancing blocks on top of each other, there is truly an indie game for any mood or any situation. And since your Switch can be with you in any situation, it's the perfect indie machine. All right, so I think we've already established that the Switch's expansive and creative library of games is a huge seller for the system. They are what you buy the system for, after all. But if that wasn't enough, Nintendo is not slowing down anytime soon, and more and more amazing titles are going to keep flooding to the system. And this has never been more true than this year. The past few years have been, shall we say, a little slow in terms of game releases. And that applies not only to the Switch or games, but everything in general. After we all survived the cluster f that was 2020 and then took the whole of 2021 to recover, we finally have some hope that things are going to go back to as normal as they can be in 2022. And Nintendo is celebrating this with the most exciting year of releases that we might have ever seen. The Game Gears are definitely turning full throttle at Nintendo and 2022 is chockers with new releases. We just had Pokemon Legends Arceus, which truly is legendary, might I add. But not only that, we also have a new Kirby game coming out later this month, Triangle Strategy, Splatoon 3, Bayonetta 3, Breath of the Wilds 2, and the next generation of Pokemon was just announced the other day, and that's coming out later this year as well. We have only named but a few releases forecast to be coming to the Switch this year, and they are all AAA exclusives. But of course, there is a ton of indies coming your way as well. Like Bear and Breakfast, which I have been waiting years for, Sea of Stars, and literally countless others. The Switch's future in 2022 is brighter than it has ever been, and we can't wait to see what else it has in store for us. This year is already ridiculous. Can it even get much better? We got so excited about all of the games that are coming out this year that we made a whole video on the ones that we're looking forward to most. So check that one out if you want to beef up your wish list. Here's a bonus point for all you wonderful people who've stuck through the video for this long. Accessories and customization. The amount of random accessories, both useful and useless for the Nintendo Switch is incredible. There's so many that a certain famous Nintendo YouTuber made a whole series out of buying them. You've got controllers and cases, thumb grips and docks, nighttime bed holders and snack dispensers. Honestly, it's pretty insane, but it is Definitely a lot of fun. We also noticed the huge number of people that enjoy using these products, as well as others like skins to customize their consoles. It's so easy to turn your Nintendo into something that really speaks to you and that is truly yours. At the very least, you can pick up a carrying case that's a little more exciting than Nintendo's plain black, somewhat useless one. If customizing your Switch, be that a new one you're thinking of picking up this year, or an old one, then we highly recommend clicking the link in the description and heading over to Switcheries. They have some amazing items that I'm sure will scratch that creative itch. And it also helps support us, so it's a win-win for everyone. We're not saying that these things don't exist for PlayStation and Xbox. We know that they do, but we just don't see them as much. Maybe it's just the circles we hang out in, but we can't help but feel it's just more prevalent with the Switch. What you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? Stop! <laughs> this is a private moment! <laughs>